20 to 24 Rush Street was developed by Buckley Real Estate Development, LLC, replacing an older building damaged in a fire. This 10-unit building is located in East Somerville within walking distance to Sullivan Station. Amenities to the property and unit include open concept floor plan, high ceilings, large windows, white oak floors, central heating and cooling, a laundry closet, additional closet space, and polished quartz countertops. For additional information about this property, please visit 24rushstreet.com. On the website, you can see a full list of amenities, view photos of comparable units, and take a video tour. You may contact the marketing agent, Josh Carr, to request floor plans of Unit A, schedule a viewing, and ask other questions you may have about the unit or the property. Josh Carr may be called at 617-898-7282 or emailed at josh.carr at nemoves.com. 20 Rush Street Unit A is a one-bedroom garden-level unit that is approximately 660 square feet. This unit will be available to a household that has a yearly gross income at or below 80% of the area median income. The sales price is $165,163. Initial condo fees are set at $70 with 36 cents and initial taxes are $166 with 52 cents. As a deed restricted unit, applicants should be aware of certain restrictions that the buyer must agree to, outlined and formalized in a recorded affordable housing restriction. This unit must be the principal and primary residence of the buyer. Under no circumstance may this unit be rented or Airbnb'd or leased out in any, in any other way. The compliance and monitoring team of the housing division will conduct annual monitoring of this unit. Other requirements include requiring written consent from the city to refinance. Also, when the household wishes to sell this unit, the city must first be notified. The city will set the resale price to ensure this unit remains affordable to households with incomes at or below 80% of the area median income at the time of the resale. This resale price set by the city is non-negotiable. To be considered for this opportunity, a household must have a yearly gross income at or below 80% of the area median income. See slide 9 for a list of current income limits. Household assets may not exceed $250,000, excluding restricted retirement, college, and health savings accounts. Households must demonstrate having sufficient assets to make a 3% down payment and should have assets to cover closing costs. Households must be first-time home buyers, and no household member can have owned a property or joint interest in property within the last three years. Please refer to the information packet for five exceptions to this rule. In a household of one, the head of household cannot be a full-time student. If there are two co-heads of a household, only one may be a full-time student. Full-time students include PhDs, and student status is established by the learning institution. Student status must be verified directly by the learning institution at the time of income certifying. Lastly, households of convenience are not permitted. All household members of a household where there is at least one unrelated member must provide verification of mutual residency leading up to December 21st, 2020 at the time of income certifying. With the pre-lottery application, Applicants must provide a first-time homebuyer certificate that is valid through February 10, 2021, or proof of enrollment in a course that is scheduled to end by February 10, 2021. Applicants must also provide a mortgage pre-approval letter from a lender. This letter must be valid through January 20, 2021. This letter must be for a 30-year fixed mortgage, must include an interest rate or an interest range, and must have gone through a hard credit check with income and asset verification. Online lenders such as Rocket Mortgage or Quicken Loans will not be accepted. Lastly, applicants must demonstrate in the pre-lottery application having sufficient assets to make a required 3% down payment. Households should have assets to pay for closing costs as well. A household consists of anyone who intends to reside in the unit during the first year and may include related or unrelated and unmarried persons with a history of living together, children under 18, 
persons with or without income, full-time students over 18, unborn children if in the third trimester by the time of the lottery, children who reside with the applicant 183 or more days out of the year, and absent household members. This table includes maximum annual gross income limits for one, two, and three person households. The city of Somerville does not set minimum income requirements. Minimum income requirements would be established by the lender. The maximum income limit for a one person household is $67,400 per year. For a two person household, it is $77,000 per year. And the third for a three person household, it is $86,650 per year. Again, this is annual gross income before taxes. Income is defined as all amounts, monetary or not, that go to or are received by or on behalf of any household members. Income includes any amounts anticipated within the next 12 months, as well as interest accrued off assets to which any household member has access to. It is the household's responsibility to accurately divulge all income and anticipated changes in household income. Examples of income include but are not limited to wages from a job, self-employment, unemployment earnings, social security and disability benefits, child support even if in arrears, compensation from one-time gigs and events, assistance from family or friends, earnings from yard sales, art sales, and fundraising campaigns such as GoFundMe, CrowdSource, again, as well as any dividends and interest off assets. Assets include saving and checkings accounts, CDs, mutual funds, investment accounts, IRAs, 401ks, other retirement accounts, bonds, digital or cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin, cash apps such as Venmo, PayPal, business accounts, cash on a hand, any account that holds a balance regardless if the balance is zero dollars in the U.S. or abroad, as well as all joint accounts that list a household member's name. Applicants are recommended to consider the following questions to ensure that income is accurately reported in the pre-lottery application. Will a household member gain or lose employment or income source in the next 12 months? Are there expected changes in work hours? Is overtime being considered? Is there a history of raises, bonuses, commissions, or cost of living adjustments in the last three years? Are they expected in the next 12 months? If not, why not? What changed? Is any income seasonal, such as academic or landscaping? Is there alternative income during the off season? Is there a busy season? Also, applicants should consider their pay frequency, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, bi-monthly, monthly, bi-weekly meaning every two weeks, bi-monthly meaning twice a month. Lastly, applicants should anticipate, especially those who are self-employed, anticipate whether they will be gaining or losing clients, contracts, or other income sources. Applicants can also take the following steps to ensure that income is being reported as accurately as possible in the pre-lottery application. This includes checking in with HR and office manager or union rep about changes in employment such as hours or raises, reviewing bank statements for deposits and transfers made in all assets, identifying the source, reason, and frequency of these deposits. Applicants may also review taxes to ensure what's reported in the taxes is the same as what's being reported in the pre-lottery application. If there are any discrepancies, these must be addressed. Applicants should also consider ending any pending income sources and anticipated changes to income in the next 12 months. Lastly, households should calculate their total monthly and annual gross income. With the pre-lottery application, applicants must submit a mortgage pre-approval letter, a first-time home buyer certificate, or verification of enrollment in a course, as discussed previously, or if applicable, preference verification. Depending on the lender, a mortgage pre-approval may also be referred to as a credit approval or a pre-qualification letter. Regardless, the mortgage pre-approval letter must cover the price of the home minus the 3% down payment or any additional down payment that's being applied. The letter must be for a 30-year fixed mortgage and include an interest rate or an interest range. The letter must be subject to credit, employment, and asset verification, and this letter must be valid through the lottery. 
The first time homebuyer certificate must be valid through February 10th, 2021. If registered for a course, the course must be completed by the state. First time homebuyer courses must be approved by the Massachusetts Housing Collaborative. Please visit chapa.org for a list of MHC approved courses offered throughout the region. This opportunity has two preference tiers. The highest preference will be granted for eligible applicants who are former residents of 20 Rush Street displaced by a fire. The second preference tier will be granted for eligible applicants that provide current verification of Somerville residency or, or of working in Somerville at least 32 hours a week. Both live and work preferences are co-equal. Preference documentation must be dated within 30 days of when a complete application is submitted. Verification of Somerville residency must include a household member's name and the Somerville address. Acceptable forms of verification may include a utility bill, cell phone bill, credit card or bank statement, voter registration letter, or a current lease. Utility bills being submitted as proof of Somerville residency must have a statement date within the last 30 days, not a bill due date. Verification of employment in Somerville must include a household member's name, the employment address in Somerville, and the number of hours worked per week. Acceptable forms of verification include a pay stub, going by the period end date and not the check end date, or a letter from the employer. This letter must be on company letterhead and be signed and dated by the employer. Applicants in co-working spaces are not eligible for a Somerville work preference. If an applicant who typically works in Somerville but is not currently working in Somerville or working remotely because of COVID, this must be verified by the employer and the other requirements still apply that the employer still needs to verify that under normal work circumstances, they are working at a specific Somerville address 32 hours or more per week. This slide includes a sample employment verification letter. For an application to be determined complete, all adult signatures must be included in the application. Electronic signatures are accepted. All questions must be answered. Please do not leave any questions blank. If a question doesn't apply to you, please cross it out or write NA. The application must include a first-time homebuyer certificate or verification of course enrollment, a valid mortgage pre-approval letter as previously discussed, and if applicable, preference verification. Applicants failing to disclose accurate income and asset information may be denied for providing false information. They may also be found ineligible because a household does not meet income requirements. Furthermore, a household may just lose an affordable housing opportunity. The deadline to submit a complete application is Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. Due to COVID and the closure of public buildings for public health reasons, please intend to submit your application by email to inclusionary at somervillema.gov or by fax to 617-591-3235. Applications that are mailed must be received by the deadline, not postmarked. Applications can be mailed to the Housing Division Attention Inclusionary Housing Program with a mailing address of 50 Evergreen Ave, Somerville, Massachusetts, 02145. Please refer to this table for important dates and deadlines regarding this homeownership opportunity. The household selected number one in the lottery will have five business days to submit initial documents for the income certification. Required documents include, but are not limited to, complete federal tax returns for 2019, 2018, and 2017. This must include all pages and schedules, such as 1099s and W-2s. Households must provide income statements for all income sources for the months of November to December 2020, December 2020 to January 2021, and January to February 2021. Employment verification forms will be required for each employer and forms will be provided by the Housing Division at the time of income certifying. Households must submit the three most recent con consecutive months of all complete asset statements for all household accounts for the months of November to December 2020, December 2020 to January 2021, and January 2021, 2021 to February 2021. Additional documents include no income 
and no asset statements for applicable adult household members, copies of social security cards for all household members, photo IDs for all adults, and first-time homebuyer certificates if they have not yet been provided, verification of student status, divorce and separation agreements, and verification of child custody may be requested. Staff may ask for additional documents depending on the specific circumstances of a household. For any additional questions, please reach out to us by dropping in during our office hours, emailing us at inclusionary at somervillema.gov, or calling us at 617-625-6600, extension 2566. Please keep in mind that staff are working remotely and cannot respond to calls in real time, but we will call you back as soon as we can. Thank you.